I am a web developer and I know how to use the command line for a lot of different things. But how can I use Cleo to get superpowers in the command line? I know how to deploy a project to a server on DigitalOcean and I know how to use git commands like commit, merge, pull, etc. But if I was set to deploy a project on AWS, GCP or work with Kubernetes, I would be lost right away. Obviously, I could just jump straight into the documentation or read a tutorial on how to do this. But reading documentation can be daunting, so is there a way for me to skip this? In the first part of this series I will try to use AI and Clio to interact with my GitHub repos, try to do some changes and see if there's anything to Git I don't know and how Clio can help me with that. I will also use Clio to interact with my servers and my DigitalOcean account. I will see what Clio is capable of here and similar. In the second part I will try to deploy a project to a live server on AWS. This is something I have never tried before and I will not read any documentation or tutorials. I will just let Clio be my own private DevOps assistant and see what happens. In the third part I will kick it up even more and try to make Clio code for me and build a static blog. This blog will be deployed to AWS as well, but this time I will include Docker, Kubernetes and maybe even more. And what can Clio teach me when it comes to CI slash CD or other types of more advanced concepts? Using Clio for managing a GitHub repo. As I already stated, I do know how to use Git, but some of the commands are not 100% stuck in my head so I might need to google them or at least check out what they exactly do. There's also probably some commands I don't know, simply because I have never had needed to use them. And I think this is something Clio really can help me with. Plus, I can do absolutely everything from the command line. Letting AI get in control of our Git repo sounds scary, right? Don't worry, Clio will ask before actually executing anything on your behalf. When you have Clio set up on your computer and everything is running, you can start typing natural language in your command line to interact with an existing repo or to create a new one. A good thing about starting simple is that I know how to do this manually, so it's easy for me to verify that the AI is doing it in the way I want it to do. Okay, let's start with something easy. Let's use Clio to try to create a new repo for me and add a new file. Before you start Clio, you need to install Clio. So if you just go to github.com slash gptscript ao ai slash Clio, you will find a guide on how to do this. For example, brew on Mac or Linget or on Windows, or you can build it yourself. When this is done, you can just go to your command line and run Clio to start. And then I'm presented with this here. Get a lot of questions if you want to talk to AWS, Azure, GCP, Kubernetes, GitHub, DigitalOcean, etc. You can also do other things in your command line that you normally could do, but you can do it with your natural language. Okay, so anyways, I want to create a new uh, GitHub repo. If you haven't worked with GitHub in Clio before, you will probably need to authenticate this, but you will be prompted to do this. So. Let me just do say, can you create a new repo in this folder? And then it will automatically know that this is a Git repository. And okay, initially initialize a new GitHub repository. Optionally, can I create a new one? Um, please do it without the readme. Okay, so here you can see now it's trying to run git, uh, sorry, git in it, and you want to confirm that you want to do this. Yes. So now I have a new GitHub repository. Uh, can you push this empty repo to my GitHub? Okay, you need to the name of the repository. The name can be um, test project. Clio, can you help me authenticate? Okay, so here you can see now I get a guide on how to do this. Uh, and then I just need to paste in my username and my token. So let's go to github.com. My name is at least Steinover Hellset. I am not logged in, so I need to do that. And when I'm logged in, I can go to up here, find my settings, I think it was. 
So either settings or profile and then scroll down and find developer settings. And personal access tokens and the tokens classic it is what I like to use. Then create a new one, new classic one. And we can just call this Clio and it can expire in yeah, never. And the full control over everything here. Blah blah blah. Yes, yes, yes. I don't need anything more. Generate token. So now I can copy this and go here. This is Steinhove LZ uh, colon and then the token as you see up here. So now it will try to push this again. Yes, I want you to create this. The test project Clio. It was created. So if I now go back here and in here, go home and into do, do, there, my repositories. The one on the top should hopefully be the one we just created. Yes, test project Clio. Perfect. There's nothing in it though. So let's go back here. Um, can you create a file called hello.txt and add hello Clio inside? Yes, I want you to do this. Can you add the un untracked files and push them to git? Uh, yes, I want you to do this. Yes, I want you to add them. I want you to commit them. It seems there was an issue. It has not been added correctly, but why? Yes, please do this. Okay, as you see, the problem was that I hadn't added the origin, the link or connection to the GitHub repo. So now it found out this on its own, want to fix this for us. Yes, please do that. Yes, add and move that. And yes, yes. Okay, there's still a problem. I had not experienced this before. Yes, maybe the problem is move this, moving the file. So as you can see, even though I experienced some problems, the Clio found out for me what the problem was and helped me fix this. So if I go back here now and refresh, then we should be seeing the hello.txt file and the contents of this should be hello Clio. Perfect. So I mean, can this be any easier? You can now use your natural language to interact with GitHub. And as a plus, Clio will even explain everything she does in detail and teach you new things. For example, I did not know what the problem was, but she found out what it was and has done everything she could to fix this. But so far Cleo hasn't done anything I do multiple times on a daily basis. But it's nice doing this in my natural language. Now it's time to see if we can learn something new and how Cleo will handle more advanced stuff. So let's try branching out. Go back to here and then I say, can you create a new branch called dev and add a new file called hello underscore dev .txt in this folder and I need to set this folder so uh, Cleo doesn't add it in the where she is located I want to have it in this folder as you can see here yes I want you to do this and yes I want you to check out and create a new branch now we have switched to this and we want to add this, yes. And yes, we want to commit this and push to origin dev, which means that we are now created a new repo, or sorry, a new branch. If I go back to Chrome again now, I should be able to see the new branch there. Cool. So what is the purpose of branching out? If this is new to you, you can for example just say, what is the purpose of branching out? There you can see here you get a good explanation with examples on uh, why you branch out, why you want to do this. So for example, if you're a junior, you can learn a lot of new things here, new terms and things you might not know from before. 
So many people who's used Git for a while know this already, but what if a junior want to find this out on him for himself and don't want to start asking a senior? You can just ask Clio. So there are a lot of other things that Clio can help me with as well. For example, cherry picking, rebasing, stashing, submodule, submodules, etc. So everything you can do with the GitHub CLI is possible to do with Clio. Let's try stashing. Now I want to add a new file and then stash it. I have used this command sometimes before, but so I know what it does, but I tend to forget the syntax. So let's try asking this in plain English. Can you add one more file in this folder called stash test.txt? Test.txt. So yes, now it's creating. Yes. And it's even understood what I want to do. So the text in here is, this is a test file for stashing. It's cool. Um, I want to stash the changes. Uh, can you help me through this? So now you see that I get uh, some information about what stashing is or how to do this. So run git stash. Yes, we can do that. No local changes to save. That's because we have a file that's not added to git. So if you're on git status now, it will say that this file hasn't been committed yet. So, or it means that it's untracked. So I want to run this now. Yes. Which means that now we can stash this. Yes. Saved working directory, blah, blah, blah. The changes have been successfully stashed. Your working directory is now clean. If I run ls now, I should only see the two other files that I have here. The hello dev and hello. Perfect. This is not longer visible because it has been stashed. And this here is already knowing this. So since this is now stashed, I don't need to do anything more here. Um, can you give me some more info on stashing? If you want to know other types of stashing, because if for example, you had a list stash, you can list out, apply, drop, pop, etc. So there are a lot of other things you can do with stashing that can be very helpful when you work with GitHub, especially when you work with many branches or with multiple people on a team. Um, can you help me unstash the hello uh, what the file, what did I call it? The stash test. Dash test .txt. Um, because maybe you don't know what the, how to revert this file. So you can just ask this in plain English. So the command is git stash apply. That's how you get this back. Okay. Let's try to run this. If I run ls now, hopefully I should see all of these files. Perfect. So not only did this work almost seamlessly, but I got an explanation and which command Clio used to test this. So besides for the problem in the beginning, everything has worked very good. So what more can you do with GitHub? What more can you help me with for GitHub? I will probably get a list of what else you can do. Here you can see repository management, branch management, pull requests so you can merge and stuff, create issues, work with actions, settings, operations, secrets, projects, etc. So there are a ton of things you can do. And since this will understand all languages, you can speak in your own language as well. It doesn't have to be English. It can be Norwegian or Spanish or whatever you want. Let's jump to the next part of this tutorial. Using Clio for interacting with DigitalOcean. So the next step now is to interact with DigitalOcean using Clio. I want to check the status of my droplets and I want to try to create a new droplet. Plus, I want to see if there is anything more Clio can help me with. You can begin by creating a new droplet. I think this should be pretty straightforward. So let's just ask Clio if she can do this for me and see what happens. Can you create a new droplet for me? 
And I think DigitalOcean is the only place that you use uh, Droplet. So it understood that I want to do this on DigitalOcean and not, uh, for example, on AWS. So I need to provide this information here. One, the Droplet name, um, Clio test, two, uh, which region, FRA21, which is Frankfurt, that's close to me. Uh, the size can just be what she uh, gives an example. One virtual CPU, one gigabyte. Um, for which image I want to use, we can use Ubuntu 24-x64. Five, my SSH key. Six, do I need backups? No. And seven, do you need monitoring? Yes, this can be applied. So just hit enter. Um, and here you can see the command it's trying to use. So I have already got uh, the authentication with DigitalOcean. And yes, I wanted to run this. Okay, there seems to be an issue with SSH identifier. Not valid. Okay, um, let's try to run this again, but add this in ticks, because I think since I had a space in here, it didn't work. So, hit enter. Hmm. Why did this not work? Yes, list them. Okay, I can try to use just one of these. Um, which one is the... you can use this one. Use that one. Yes, please run this again. Okay, so now it looks like I have a new droplet running. Um, can you check the status of all my droplets? Yes, please run this. Okay, as you can see here, I have a few droplets running. And the status for Clio is that it's new, so it's not... Oops, sorry, it's not active uh, yet. But it will probably be very soon. Okay, so that seems to be working. Perfect. Uh, can you check the status for... Try to check for this specific ID again. Yes. So now we can see that this is active. Perfect. So that means that it's running. Can also just delete this because I'm not going to use this. So can you delete the droplet with ID? Yes, I want you to do this. Perfect. So now the Clio test droplet was deleted. So now I can check the status. I can create new droplets and I can delete them. And even though I have created probably 20 or 30 servers the last years, um, it might not be necessary for me to do it this way, but it's very cool to see what I can do for my command line. So there are also a lot of other cool things you can do with Clio and DigitalOcean. You can uh, resize your droplets, rebuild them, power off, power on, backup, monitoring. You can tag them, work with the floating IPs, uh, manage the firewalls, manage the SSH key, etc. So try to play around with this and see if you're able to do anything cool. In the next part of this article, in the next part of this series, I will try to deploy a simple website on a server on AWS. This is something I've never done before, but it will be cool to see if Clio Real can help me with this. See you in the next video.